Now I'm going to discuss how we would look for a new law. In general, we look for a new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> Th then we com... Well, don't laugh. That's what's really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guess is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature. Or we say compare to experiment or experience. Compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is. It doesn't make a difference how smart you are who made the guess or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. A lot of times he'd get crazy theories about how physical things worked. But he was always putting his theories to the test. And that was a great thing about Richard, is whenever you ask a question and couldn't think of the answer, he'd always say, well, what experiment can we do to, to figure it out? And I remember once, for instance, uh, we were making spaghetti. And that was sort of our favorite thing to eat together. So we, uh, we both enjoyed it. Nobody else seems to like it. But if you take a spaghetti stick and you break it, uh, it turns out that instead of breaking in half, it'll break in three pieces. So I said, Richard, why is this true? Why does it break in three pieces? So we ended up spending the next two hours coming up with all these crazy theories about why spaghetti breaks into three pieces. And in fact, we ended up doing all these experiments, like breaking it underwater because we thought it might dampen the sound, and we had some theory of breaking it at all kinds of different distances, or putting it on a table and breaking it off the edge, and things like that. And so we ended up, at the end of a few hours, with all this broken spaghetti all over the kitchen. <laughs> and uh, no real good theory of why spaghetti breaks in three pieces, but a lot of fun experiments. People say to me, are you looking for the ultimate uh, laws of physics? No, I'm not. I'm just looking to find out more about the world. And if it turns out there is a simple ultimate law that explains everything, so be it. That would be very nice to discover. If it turns out it's like an onion with millions of layers and we're just sick and tired of looking at the layers, then that's the way it is. But whatever way it comes out, its nature is there and she's going to come out the way she is. And therefore, when we go to investigate it, we shouldn't pre-decide what it is we're trying to do except to find out more about it. If you say, but your problem is why do you find out more about it? If you thought that you were trying to find out more about it because you're going to get an answer to some deep philosophical question, you may be wrong. It may be that you can't get an answer to that particular question by finding out more about the character of nature. But I don't look at it. My, my interest in science is to simply find out about the world. And the more I find out, the better it is I like to find out. Melville Feynman, a struggling businessman, transferred his own dream of becoming a scientist to his son Richard. He had taught me to notice things, and one day when I was playing with a little wagon for children to pull around, it had a ball in it. I remember this, it had a ball in it. And I pulled the wagon, and I noticed something about the way the ball moved. So I went to my father and I said, say, Pop, I noticed something. When I pull the wagon, the ball rolls to the back of the wagon. It rushes to the back of the wagon. And when I'm pulling along and I suddenly stop, the ball rolls to the front of the wagon. I said, why is that? And he said, that, he says, nobody knows. He said, the general principle is that things that are moving try to keep on moving. And things that are standing still tend to stand still unless you push on them hard. And he says, this tendency is called inertia, but nobody knows why it's true. Now, that's a deep understanding. He doesn't give me a name. He knew the difference between knowing the name of something and knowing something, which I learned very, very early. He went on to say, if you look close, you'll find the ball does not rush to the back of the wagon, but it's the back of the wagon that you're pulling against the ball, that the ball stands still. Or as a matter of fact, from the friction, starts to move forward, really, and doesn't move back. So I ran back to the little wagon and set the ball up again and pulled the wagon from under it and looking sideways and seeing indeed he was right, the ball never moved backwards in the wagon when I pulled the wagon forward. It moved backward relative to the wagon, but relative to the sidewalk, 
it was moved forward a little bit. It's just the wagon caught up with it. So that's the way I was educated by my father, with those kind of uh, examples and discussions. With no pressure, just lovely, interesting discussions. Uh, 